Hi everyone, welcome back. Order of operations causes so many problems for so many students and they get mixed up. Let's have a look at this situation. Order of operations comes from normal life, not because we just want to make up weird uh, rules that we just apply whenever we want to as mathematicians. If you walk into a butcher and you said I want two kilograms of sausages at ten dollars, most of you would look at that and go, well that would be two lots of ten, that would be twenty dollars. If you wanted kilograms of steak, at $20, most of you would look at that and you'd be okay, that's five lots of 20, you could pick up your calculator, five lots of 20 is $100. So you know that your bill, when you add those two up, is going to be $120. If I turn that into a math situation where it's just two lots of 10 plus five lots of 20, here's where order of operation comes in, I feel like making a comedy video about it. So if I went two times 10 is 20, and I thought that I could just go from left to right, and if I thought I didn't have to do multiply first, then I can go 20 plus 5 is 25, multiply it by 20, and that ends up being 500. So can you imagine you walk in to buy some steak and you expect to spend $120, and the butcher charges you $500, and you go, no, you got it wrong, and they say, no, no, it's just 2 times 10, add the 5, and then multiply by 20. So that's the first chance to have a look at it and see that order of operations is important. So it's easy to get caught up with why are we doing it, what are we doing? So multiplication is more powerful than addition. So if I made this question one, multiplication is more powerful than addition, so we do that first. So that's 20, it's almost like this is first and this is first. So let's have a look what we did over here. We calculated the 20, we calculated the 100, so there's the 20 and there's the 100, and we add the two together to get the correct answer of $120. So what do we have to do first? The multiplication has to come first, whether it's here, whether it's there. But what mucks people up though is when we start to do division, and then people get mixed up in terms of why and when do we do division. So let's have a look at another example. So let's have a look at these two questions and see what's going on. It has a divide and a multiply. And a lot of people think you have to do the multiply first. So they go ahead and they go 6 divided by 30. And then they get into trouble going, how can it be 6 divided by 30? So if I look at the situation, division and multiplication are equal. One's not stronger than the other. And the big issue is we talk about going from left to right. So when they're equal, we go from left to right. So a 6 divided by 3 is a 2. I don't have to write that down. If I wanted to, I could have written it up there. And there's an answer to that. I could have gone 2 tens or 20. So there's my answer of 2 tens or 20. So you don't go the multiply first. If it's multiplication and division, you just go from left to right. So over here, it's not all multiply and divide. And people think, well, you go from left to right. So they go 5 plus 6 is 11 because we nag about left to right, just like you're normally reading anything. But the division is more powerful. So when they're equally powerful, you go from left to right. If there's a division or a multiply, that has to be done first. There are people who like to put brackets around it. I find the students tend to get confused the more brackets you put in, but that's me. So I'm gonna look at it and I'm going to go six divided by two. How many times does two go into six? And that's three, and you end up with eight. So we have this order of operations that develops over time, depending on what's happening. Let's have a look what happens with 8 divided by 2 minus that. So there's the divide is more powerful than the subtraction, and this divide is more powerful than the subtraction. Then we know we're wanting to go left to right, but that has to be done first. How many times does 2 go into 8? And it's 4. How many times does 3 go into 6? That's twice. And then we can do the subtraction as 4 take 2 is 2. By the way, if you pick up your calculator, it will understand what order to do that in, and that, and that. So on this last one, we've got a mixture of division and multiplication. And a lot of people think they have to do the multiply first. Let's have a look what happens. That is equally as powerful as that one. So 10 divided by 2 is 5. How many times is 2 going to 10? 2 times 2 is 4. And then I'm going to do the subtract to go left to right. So more powerful things have to be done first. And then you do what's left over second, which is a 5 take 4, which is 1. I hope it helps. If you're enjoying it, please tell your friends.